You're not a big fan of zero mana artifacts that have no impact on the board. Those aren't my favorites. <laughs> Those are not my favorites. No. <laughs> but Caleb likes them. Yeah. It's just not for me. I admired his efforts in Standard to play Storm week one. I really did with Aetherflux Reservoir. It just couldn't do it. But just he gave it his all. And he did get to go off in the first game that we got to watch where he'd like to do his thing. The other games were uh, worst of SCG live moments, I would say. <laughs> but, but we got to see one really good one. I got Taxi and Probe here from Caleb. He's going to show Jim's hand of two Delver Secrets, two Deathrite Shamans, a Ponder, a Daze, and a Scalding Tarn. Yep. No Force of Will. Yep. The Daze is easy to play around once you know about it. In theory, Jim could be dead right now. Potentially right now. May maybe Caleb will need the extra turn. Sometimes you have to cast a, a Ponder or Preordain to find that last piece that you need. But yeah, it's very possible. The coast is clear and Caleb will just go for it here. A basic island. You see these two players having a good time with each other. Uh, they've played quite a bit. Jim is... <laughs> 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 well, that's, that's how you should look. Yep. But it looks like Caleb, I think, might just be fetching and passing the turn. No, I lied. Ponder. And one. And two. And three. Brainstorm and Tentrils of Agony among the cards Caleb is pondering. And it looks like Caleb's hand has all the mana that he needs. So it's just a matter of finding a tutor or an ad nauseum. So as a Storm player, if you see that hand on Jim's side, you see the Days, you see the, the Delvers and the Deathrite Shamans, but you're probably pretty happy, right? Yes. See on the other side of the table. Not too much going on over there. Cabal Ritual to draw. Ponder's done resolving. And now we go over to Jim Davis. The captain of Team Metagame Gurus will draw a Wasteland for the turn. We'll sacrifice a Scalding Tarn. Search up a land. A little underground sea action. And play a Deathrite Shaman. A little bit of acceleration for JD. And we'll be heading back over to Caleb Shearer in just a bit. For Shearer, he'll draw. Has a duress in hand. Looks like he just picked up a copy of Dark Ritual. Looks like a Dark Ritual. Misty Rainforest. Lion's Eye Diamond. And simply pass the turn back. To Davis we go. He'll draw. Force of Will. All right, that's helpful. Yeah, that's a critical one. Now the question is, how does Jim want to move forward? Yeah, he, he has a lot of avenues here. He can, he can try to deploy another one of his creatures here. Um, you know, getting a Delver onto the board, and setting it up with a, a Ponder, make sure it flips the next turn. He has the Force of Will days back up to this strategy. Here is Ponder. Ponder going to resolve a Daze, a Wasteland, and a Dark Confidant. Eh. Yeah, that's not the most exciting collection of cards. I wouldn't be too scared of that, I would say. Doesn't do a lot for me. Wouldn't be too happy if I'm Jim, so... I think a shuffle's appropriate. The though. old shuffle of Yeah. And Jim will draw a mystery card. But he has to be feeling a little bit. He, he, he peeled the force of will, and his opponent didn't just kill him on turn two. Yeah. yeah and Caleb knew that the coast was clear. It's a sigh of relief. Yeah. Flooded Strand. But on the flip side, uh, you know, 
Caleb has plenty of time here to keep sculpting his hand. If it, if it takes a couple of draw steps, a, a brainstorm and a ponder, he has that duress just waiting to make sure the coast is clear when the time comes to go off. There's a tropical, nope. <laughs> He's just showing off his deck a little bit. Yeah. Have you seen this card before? <laughs> yes, Jim. This is Legacy. We've all seen a tropical <laughs> island before. We're very used to it. He'll get an underground sea instead. And now a Delver. And now a Death Rite. All right. We go to Caleb. Caleb will draw. Ugh. That was a quick turn. Yeah, it looked like it might have been another ritual that he peeled off the top. So maybe just missing an action spell? Spell Pierce is a good reveal. That is. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. All right. Davis is kind of rocking and rolling now. He's just going to attack with Insectile Aberration. He's got... Spell Pierce Days and Force and Wasteland. He's going to play the Wasteland and simply pass the turn back. Yep, and, and he got the second Underground Sea so that both of the Deathrite Shamans can start machine gunning down Caleb here. Pass in Flames the draw here for Caleb, and that might be the card that's going to try to get him to go. Maybe. Yeah, he might want to wait one more turn, but... Uh, it's a tough spot either way. The Death Rite Shamans take care of his graveyard so quick that the Pass in Flames is not a very effective card here. All right, pass. Ponder down, probe down, share his life total down to 10. Davis will draw. Flooded Strand. Yeah, it looks like Caleb just wasn't able to find the tutor effect that he needed. I mean, thus far. Maybe something interesting will happen. I don't know. Well, it's been a pretty quiet day up until now. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much has happened that yeah. matters. The games have been very predictable. There's a flooded strand from Davis. He'll pass. Caleb will draw. <laughs> Tendrils. Well... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not sure if that's a thing or not. Yeah, I mean, he may be able, able to build a storm count here. And There's a lotus petal. Live for another turn or two, but... I don't, I don't think that's going to be the card he needed there. This is going to be kind of interesting. Storm Council 1. All right, here's Dark Ritual. And C Caleb needs his opponent to play a couple of spells here to build the Storm Count for him. Mm -hmm. My question is, what are the cards that Jim is going to fight over? This is always a really uneasy feeling on your side where you have a lot of permission in your hand. Yeah. And you're trying to decide, ah, well, maybe I want to spell pierce this. Maybe I want to force that. All right, so here's spell pierce. Does Caleb pay for this? Is my question. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try to use another ritual effect in order to pay for it. Maybe not. Yeah, this is a. Uh, he's not sure. He does have a duress in hand, too. I think what he'd like to be able to do is he'd like to be able to go 
Dark Ritual resolves, use one of the mana to duress you. Yeah. You're like, either Dark Ritual or Cabal Ritual, just some sort of mana. All right. He's going to sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. We're going to see him search up a little something here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try to use the Cabal Ritual to pay for the Spell Pierce, but I expect Jim to fight over the mana at this point. Mm hmm. All right, so he wants to pay. All right, days. Okay. So now what? LED. Chromots. What's he going to imprint? And he's got Passing Flames in hand. Yeah, I mean, on, on some level, he got what he wanted here. Jim has cast two spells. Storm count five. Storm count six? Should be six with Lotus Petal. Yeah, Storm Count's six now. All right, here's Duress. Yeah, so now it should be seven with Duress. Yeah, we'll get that worked yeah. out. No, eight's, eight's, a little, <laughs> eight, eight's, eight's, a little, eight's a little high. <laughs> They'll get it right. Yeah. There we go. Seven all day. Four, five, six, seven. There you go. Some of the smartest guys you'll ever meet. <laughs> Counting to seven can be real tough sometimes. Really, really difficult. <laughs> all right. So what Caleb is hoping for now, he's going to play Fast and Flames. He is really, really hoping. Yep, never mind. Yeah, he doesn't even want to show his hand. Yeah. So I think the hope there was if he plays Pass and Flames. Oh, actually, he just can't, he can't even cast Pass and Flames. Never mind. Because the two LEDs. Like, he actually just can't physically cast the Well, he, he breaks them. He, he breaks them. Excuse me. He breaks yeah. them both and flashes it back. Yes. Um, the flashback cost is five. Yeah. So then he has a black floating to cast Dark Ritual. Yep, into Cabal Ritual. Well, his Cabal Ritual got imprinted. Oh, it did get imprinted. Sure. Yeah. But it's, so he had seven men on the board there. We had two LEDs, and he, he played Chromox, imprinted Chromox. Yep. He imprinted with Chromox. Oh, no, and then he used it to duress. Yeah, so he would have one black floating to recast Dark Ritual, would leave him short yeah. to, re to recast the tendrils that was discarded. But none of that actually works. None, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter because there's the two death ray shamans. shamans. Yeah. yeah. And I don't believe that Jim is going to miss that interaction. So yeah. uh, Jim Davis does win game number one against Caleb Shearer. Saltai Delver up a game over Storm after some fortunate draw steps there for Jim. Timely Force of Will and Spell Pierce as we take a look at the sideboards now. We will start with Caleb Share, who's got this green sideboard of three Xanthid Swarms, a Chrome Mock, two Surgical Extractions, four Abrupt Decays, two Crows and Grip, an Empty the Warrens, a Bayou, and a Tropical Island. Talk to me about Caleb's sideboard. Yeah, not a lot of changes happening here. Um, I don't think he wants the green cards for this matchup. Okay. You know, generally the green package comes in against decks that can't attack your lands. It's really good against Miracles. Um, so I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, it's probably just find a spot for this one empty the warrants to end up in the deck so that if he has that lower storm count turn one or two, he just ends up with 12 or 14 goblins. Okay. And those are enough to carry it home. On the other side of things here, for Jim Davis, two Baleful Strikes, two Thoughtseize, a Pithy Needle, two Surgical Extraction, uh, two Dread Knight and Marsh Casualties, a Winter Orb and Null Rod, a Maelstrom Pulse, a Force of Will and Dismember. I know that you mentioned a little bit earlier in coverage, Null Rod happens to be very good against Storm. Yeah. So you have to imagine he's going to want that, but what else do you see? Well, the Surgical Extraction's very powerful, uh, just super cheap interaction. The Thought Seizes, the Pithing Needle. 
What are we naming this needle? You can turn off LED, no? No, mana ability. Okay, yeah. Almost positive. Yeah, no, I mean, I should know this, but and, and the Force of Will is going to come in as well. Yeah, the, the, definitely the extra copy of Force of Will. For sure, for sure. So Jim's got some good options. not great. Jim's deck is definitely geared towards beating Death and Taxes. And actually, a lot of people came here this week, and I've talked to, who said they felt the Death and Taxes was going to be very popular this weekend. So that's why you see the copies of Dreaded Knight uh, and Marsh Casualties. And actually, Baleful Strix, too, which is actually pretty good against yep. them. So it uh, gives you an idea what both players are working with. And as they do sideboard and get ready, we're going to talk about the StarCityGames.com, a YouTube page where you can go back and watch the replays of this tournament. The Versus Series, the Commander Versus Series, with Jonathan Suarez and Justin Parnell, Jeremy Knoll and Stephen Green, Magic Online Playtesting, Jeremy Knoll's new Magic News Show, Split Second, Best of SCG Live, where we're going to have a bunch of those in a couple of days, and a whole bunch more. Subscribe today at YouTube.com slash Star City Games. Become of one of over 104,000 now? That's a lot of people. Yeah. Thank you guys for that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, listen awesome. To if you have an attention span of less than 10 seconds, we have a show geared towards you. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Split second. Great show by Jeremy Noll. Let me check here. Yeah, over 104,000 subscribers now. You guys rock. Thank you very much. Hope you're enjoying the content. We're going to have more cool stuff coming down the pipeline pretty soon. I think people are going to really enjoy. Split second was one of them, but we've got some other ones coming now, too. It takes a little time to get them off the ground. You gotta do some test shows and stuff. Yeah, I heard there were some ideas circulating about updates to the creature collection. I can't tell everyone about those. Those are secret ones. Secret no, I, I don't know anything about it. Secret hidden gems about the updates to the creature collection. We'll have to see. We'll Wait, there's see. updates to the creature there collection? There might be. There might be for next year. We, might, we got some really good ones coming down the pipeline. Uh, Jim's gonna take a mulligan. He's up a game, so we'll learn a little bit more about the player's champion who is here to play some Legacy. He's off to a pretty good start, six and two. We know we're gonna see him at the end of the year. He's gonna take a look at six cards while he does that. We learn that the 32 year old from Long Island, New York has 11 open top eights, two wins. Uh, one, one last year, one this year. We saw him win actually in Baltimore this year in this room with Bant Company. Uh, pretty easy win for him. That was actually a show that I think yep. uh, you and I did together. Oh Jim, yeah. Jim mushed everyone with Bant Company. Hi, he's a DJ, he loves to stream Magic Online, loves to sell some hockey as well. Fantasy football too. And he is your defending and potentially back-to-back -back player's champion. As now here's a good taxi in Pro from Caleb. Two Deathrite Shamans, a Delver, a Vendillion Click, a Fluted Delta, and a Daze. Once again, a hand that Caleb sees and... Yeah, the, the coast is kind of clear. If, yeah. if Caleb can find the right pieces, his opponent's not going to stop him. It seems like a good hand to see. Oh, and it looks like Caleb's very close to just going off this turn. Lotus Petal. His LED Ritual. Oh, no. He's grabbed the Storm Counter. Yeah. We're going to see a first turn. Yeah. As long as his deck cooperates. Brainstorm. Maybe he needs something. Oof. Small Ritual. Ponder. Infernal. How many turn one kills have you had playing Storm? Uh, enough. I mean, that's not something you really keep track of. Like, I, you know, I don't have a little check mark on my box where, like, every time I get a turn one kill, add another check to add, it. Add it to the ledger. But, I mean, it is awesome when it happens. Infernal Tutor. And you don't always get to do it when you know what your opponent's hand is. True. Sometimes you just have to move in on turn one, hope they have nothing. He's going to reveal Dark Ritual. All right. Yes, yeah, th that's just a redundant copy of... Jim is uh, Jim is doing a little bit of doodling. Yeah, he's distracting me here from my coverage job. Yeah. My, uh, a frowny face strategy. Jim, we, we brought in Cedric to keep us entertained. <laughs> we got this covered. Let's see, maybe another Dark Ritual? Sure. Pretty good. Spell seven. What now? Oh, Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah. We are running white hot. Yeah, the LED is often the critical piece. Uh, in response, crack this. I will get a Tendrils of Agony strategy. <laughs> uh, assuming that Caleb... Yeah, he has enough mana. Never mind. He has an LED. Uh, this is going to be spell... Uh, spell... Spell... Spell 10? <laughs> That's uh, spell 10. Yeah. What's 10 times 2? I'm bad at math. It, it was nice of Jim to show up for this game. <laughs> <laughs> Jam, I will take a mulligan. I will reveal my hand. I will play first for game three. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for asking. 
Jim's going to go to the sideboard to see if he has a card that can make sure that he always plays first against Storm. <laughs> Don't think there's a card in there, but we'll see what he can find. Well, it's called losing game two, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caleb Shear tie things up, ties things up against Jim Davis. Storm and Salted Elver going to game number three. Just as quick as that. Uh, this is what draws people to Storm. Yeah. Obviously, this deck does not do that every single time, but no. this is what draws people to this deck. Not every time, but it, there are very few decks that just kill you on turn or two or three. Mm -hmm. um, Storm is a deck that will do that. You know, it, if they're not disrupted, they're going to win on turn three every single time. Yep. And there are not many decks that you're playing against that are going to kill you before you get to that point. So it is the fastest, most powerful thing you can be doing in the room. It is certainly powerful. That is for sure. Yeah. Well, the, the nice thing about this deck, too, is that it's not as flimsy as a Char Belcher or something like that. Uh, because, <laughs> I mean, I, I like Char Belcher. I mean, it's a deck that kills you on turn one, or it pre at least presents close to lethal on turn one a very high percentage of the time, a frightening high percentage of the time, honestly. Uh, but uh, if your opponent has something, well, they generally win. Yeah. Or if they mulligan something, they generally win. So. Yeah, the, the Storm deck gets to play all the best cards. Yeah. So it shows up with the brainstorms and ponders, and it shows up with some discard spells to disrupt the opponent. Belcher doesn't get any of those things. No, it does not. He gets to cross the fingers. Oh, yeah. Live a little bit. Now, see, that's my kind of relaxing evening on Magic Online. Sure. So for Joe Lissette, he, you know, he puts the feet up and he's spinning the top and everything. I just try to Belcher someone on Magic Online. Yeah, man. I can appreciate that. Yeah. I want to get some good games in. I will keep. I will cast Goblin Charm. I'll try Force of Will. Okay, I'm going to go log off and do something else. Yeah. I got my fix. <laughs> to <laughs> totally cool. Seven seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need much more than that. I make it quick for everybody. Jim is taking a look at the hand. Not sure if he wants to keep her mulligan. It's the agonized Jim Davis look. He does a good job with that look because yeah. sometimes that's the you, you've already lost and you don't even know it yet look. Yeah. But he doesn't give anything away with it. There are two brainstorms over there. Don't have a great look at the rest. Well, he is hemming in a hauling on this one. And now he will take a mulligan. Caleb is going to keep. So Jim will be looking at a few less cards. Well, Jim does take that mulligan. We learn a little bit more about Caleb Shear now, number six on our SCG Tour. Player of the Year leaderboard. Looking to get back to the Players' Championship and maybe do battle against Jim as the member of Team Nerd Rage Gaming. 28 years old from the St. Louis area. Two open top eights, two invitational top eights with one victory last year at Las Vegas. He's a big math guy. He lives entirely out of his backpack. We see him every single weekend at events and... Uh, Trust me when I say he does eat as many peanuts as advertised. <laughs> only peanuts? Uh, generally only peanuts, yes. I don't know if that's a particularly healthy diet. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, generally only peanuts. Keeps him thin. I guess. I <laughs> does keep him thin. I is that a... Like a financial strategy? or I think he just really likes peanuts. It's just the most delicious thing he can think of? Yeah. I don't like peanuts that much, but All more, right. more power to him. I mean, peanuts are pretty good. No, I, yeah, I enjoy me some peanuts from time to time. I wouldn't eat my weight in peanuts. <laughs> I'm more of a cashew guy. I like a good cashew. Or a good walnut. You know who eats those fancy nuts? A lot of different people. You do. Yes. Apparently, yes, you do. Yes, I do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, got to have a pretty... Uh, and almonds. Almonds are good, too. I like almonds, too. Pretty fat wallet to go buy those fancy nuts. You do. Fancy nuts. Yes, you do. I can taxi and probe here for Caleb. He once will again, draw a card. once a third game in a row, the coast is clear. Well, he's not reaching for the... Uh, storm counter and mana symbols just yet. No. So perhaps there's a little bit more game to be played here, fortunately for Jim. Yeah, but it looks like with, with the way Jim's hand is set up, 
Caleb's going to get you know, a solid three turns here to sculpt his hand and try to find the pieces he needs. Basic swap off the polluted delta. We'll see where we do go to next. Cabal therapy for the thought seeds. Just keeping the coast clear. Looks like Abrupt Decay still in the deck for Jim. Might be a little worried about Xantid Swarm. And also, uh, if you pay attention to the way Caleb plays Storm, he actually plays a Lion's Eye Diamonds, Lion's Eye Diamonds naked a decent amount of the time. Well, sometimes. It, often if you've got multiple copies in your hand, you don't want to expose them to something like Cabal Therapy. Mm -hmm. So you have one on the board, one in the hand. We see that a decent amount. Dark Confidant, Physical Attack Scene Pro. Decay and Delta. Lotus Petal was the draw. This is an island. That is a brainstorm. Past in Flames, Cabal Ritual, and a Polluted Delta. And it looks like Caleb's hand is coming together really well for him here. He's got a pedal, there's some ritual effects, there's, there's the tutor. Uh, the Pass in Flames is not great when you're staring into the, uh, the Death Ray Shaman, but it's possible you can just build his gra graveyard up fast enough and big enough to where that card doesn't even matter. Caleb's going to put a couple of cards back here from the Brainstorm in just a moment. Pretty big match right now. Six and three, likely good enough to make day two, no guarantee. But yeah. coming into day two at seven and two as opposed to six and three is a world of difference. Yeah, if you're looking to, to make top eight and have a run at winning the event, that extra loss is huge baggage to be carrying around. We know both these players are capable of winning tournaments of this size. Right now, Caleb's got the difficult decision to make on what to do with this brainstorm. <laughs> Jim getting the die ready, maybe for the storm counter. Says, I don't. Caleb says, I don't need it just yet. Jim going to remove polluted delta from the graveyard. Slow down threshold a little bit. Yep. Yeah, he's not going to use the mana, but every card is a resource for Caleb. Wasteland is the reveal of Dark Confidant. Spell Pierce the draw. Okay. Good one to have hidden. Here comes Dark Confidant. Pluto Delta the play from Jim, and now we head back over to Caleb. Jim now does have access, pretty easy access to playing Abrupt Decay yep. and Spell Pierce. Caleb does know about the Decay, which is worth mentioning, and now he is going to play an Infernal Tutor. <laughs> Will Jim Spell Pierce this? Reveal Cabal Ritual. So the answer is no. Yeah, I would have been pretty surprised if Jim used his only permission spell on the non-hellbent tutor. Well, it's kind of interesting be because Infernal Tutor is such a powerful card even when it's not hellbent. Yeah. You know, because now Caleb has double rituals in hand. He's got plenty of mana to work with, ideally. And you almost want to convince yourself to spell pierce it, but then you don't. And here's a Lotus Petal. Yeah, I mean, Caleb's giving away a lot of information about his hand there. Like, you, you don't do that if you're not already holding another Infernal Tutor. Mm -hmm. We might see Jim abrupt the cave this Lotus Petal, maybe? No, I think he's wondering about eating a card in the graveyard. Okay. Before the land gets into play. Okay. All right. The Misty Rainforest searching will resolve. 
And those are all the basics for Caleb. Okay. Another pedal. That'll add another one to the storm count, up to three. Sacrifice a pedal. It's Cabal Ritual. So this would be with Threshold. Yes, yeah, Threshold right now. Um, it's interesting, Jim might eat one of Caleb's cards here out of his graveyard with the Death Rite Shaman. Caleb would then be inclined to sacrifice the other pedal in order to get back up to threshold. And then you and, and, and then, then you spell pierce? Jim can spell pierce it. And he's got an extra resource off of the board. No, he's just going to spell pierce now. I think one of the reasons we're seeing this too is because he actually has the ability to say I will just abrupt decay the other lotus pedal. Sure. Because he has that in his hand. And it's not really getting much better. Well, and he, he might also want to make sure he eats the ritual out of the graveyard with the Death Rite Shaman. Also true. All right, let's see where Jim goes now. He's fought off that turn with a spell pair. It's very timely. Abrupt Decay of the Lotus Petal. All right. Yeah. What's the reveal to Dark Confidants? Spell Pierce. That, yep, that's a good one. That's a good one. Draw. Stifle. Huh. Don't think Caleb's seen that yet. Here's an attack for two. Yeah, Caleb might get punked by that card. LED the draw. Jim just confirming life totals, I believe, right now. Yeah, LED was a very interesting one here. That'll change some things, I have to imagine. All right, just going to pass for now. Here's a... Deathrite Shaman activation. Infernal Tutor is out of here. Caleb down to 10. Dark Confidants. We're really Delver of Secrets. Davis will fall down to 16. The draw. Ponder. Okay. Yeah, and it, it felt like this game was so close for Caleb. Obviously, it's not over yet. Um, but it felt like, you know, Jim had mulliganed. Uh, he lost his thought seize on the first turn. It didn't feel like he was going to have the pieces to stop Caleb, but it took Caleb just a little bit too long to get, get going with the Storm deck to find all, all of the things that he needed. And the top of Jim's deck has been pretty kind to him, giving him just enough to, to hold off Caleb. Well, Jim's going to keep it the ponder because he loves himself a force will right now. Here's an attack for two. Caleb is down to six. Jim could play a wasteland if he wants to, even though it doesn't do all that much. It looks like he will play it. Yeah, there's little reason not to play it. it it's probably never going to get used this game. But the way the game is playing out, it's going to be over in one turn one way or the other. So it's not going to help him by staying in his hand. Infernal Tutor. The draw here for Caleb. Not exactly what the doctor ordered. No, not at all. He'll play Infernal Tutor. Well, with the hope of this resolving.
All right. <laughs> sure, man. Yeah, feel free. Let's see what you can do. Gonna search for another LED. 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 And Caleb's just hoping Jim's on E. Yeah. It's a feel, yeah, I mean, if he's sacking those, this is clearly a go for it turn with passive claims. Yeah, it's no choice. He, you know, he, he's going to be dead next turn if he doesn't go for it. Yep. So when Caleb does this, he retains priority. Yep, and I'm just going to try to flashback pass and flames. So he can flash that back before Jim has an opportunity to remove it with the death ray shaman. Yep, there's a spell pierce. And now here's force of will, and that is going to do it. Jim Davis is going to win this match over Caleb Shear, two games to one. Salty Delver will take care of Storm, and for Jim Davis, big win as he moves on to seven and two. Caleb Shear, a tough loss. He moves down to six and three. Uh, chances are we'll still see Caleb in day number two of competition, but his road to the top eight just got a whole lot harder after this loss to the Players' Champion. Yeah.